Good morning, everybody. 6.49 a.m., September 18th, 2017. That is Eastern Standard Time. All right, we have satellite images here of Jose. We have Maria, and then we have Tropical Depression Lee, probably becoming uh, really nothing throughout the day today, although I do see a little bit of a burst here as far as the storm center goes of uh, Lee. So we just need to keep an eye on it. Uh, there are some models that have it staying a little bit of a western path here. It is possible for it to recycle. I was talking about this a little bit last night. Um, it's just not it's not gone yet, so that's the only reason we're continuing to watch it. Uh, Maria is becoming a huge concern. Hurricane warnings all over the Lesser Antilles, Leeward Islands. Uh, we're going into Puerto Rico now, guys. Um, so for the people in those areas, you gotta just you gotta be ready for this now because this is turning into a major hurricane. We are still at Cat One, uh, 977 is the pressure. Uh, again, Cat One, 90 mile an hour. We have hit over 100 mile an hour gusts, which is just going to show, guys. This thing is rapidly growing. This thing's massive. It basically doubled in size in less than 10 hours, and they were making a big deal about that because when storms do that and when they're this low, below the 20 degree line here all that is is bad news so they are now uh, really focusing in on the path of this storm um, they are thinking it's going to be a similar deal to if I can get the right stuff pulled up here there we go they do think it's going to be very similar to Irma's original path they are relying heavily on the Gulf pressure to keep this thing out of the Gulf and off the west side of Florida uh, areas like Naples and stuff are still uh, putting their lives back together, especially the Florida Keys. That's literally all they're talking about as far as the cleanup for Irma. Just news crews in the Keys and stuff like that. So uh, the last thing we need is for them to get this hurricane. But the last thing anyone needs is this hurricane right now. And all it's showing right now is it progressively getting stronger throughout the day. Um, I do believe it'll be a Cat 2 by the end of today, at least possibly Cat 3 within the next 30 hours. Maybe sooner than that by the... the speed that this thing's growing and it's just spinning so quickly you can see in this wind map here um, it doesn't go back too far uh, actually okay we can see that and had it not been for these frames I talked about this in another video this thing looks like it was just gonna pass off and, and, and be just a small system that moves to the west and then out of nowhere this thing just starts spinning like crazy it's almost like skipping steps here uh, they do look for key things to happen in these storms and then they get an idea of what the speed's going to be after that but this thing's throwing everyone off right now they don't know exactly what the deal is as far as how rapidly it's progressing so what they're doing is they're keeping recon planes in the area um, which they don't normally do they usually send them in bring them home but now they're bringing them into this storm and landing them in separate areas in other countries basically just so they have closer access to this thing so they can keep a close eye on it um, of course we have Jose now beginning to bow out just like we saw Irma did when it hit the south uh, began hitting the south tip of Florida and then up the side near Naples and all those areas it began to bow out into the uh, into the states here and then part of it came down towards the Gulf uh, giving Houston a lot more rain and then parts of it moved out to the upper east coast and it was just a pain for days and days and that's exactly what Jose is going to do guys Jose is going to come up into the northeast it's going to begin to bow out which it's already been doing and then it's projected by European GFS and all the other secondary models to hook around and just sit here and just continue with wind and, and uh uh, and waves and beach erosion and stuff like that although we're not talking uh, hurricane status we do have hurricane or uh, tropical storm warnings uh, here's a wind map currently right now and you can see the entire basically coast from Jersey all the way up through Rhode Island Massachusetts and even up almost into New Hampshire is all just these yellow bars this is pretty strong winds guys this is no joke and if this thing is sitting here for four five six days all we're talking about is saturation and flooding that's going to be the main issue and then with the potential of Maria coming right up behind it we're talking a lot of water guys so people are downplaying this okay so it's not a hurricane but now we're talking what a four or five day nor'easter 
Um, I don't know if you guys remember the last nor'easters we've had, but they usually last a day or two, depending on the speed, depending on the jet stream speed, which we always talk about. But those things are nasty. They're not fun to deal with. Everything's soggy, wet. We're getting into those colder days now. Uh, we're more than halfway through September. And then once that 21st comes, guys, and then the, the uh, fall starts, you know how rapidly that cool weather comes. So it's just going to be a change in mentality. People are going to not, you know, when you don't have sunlight and stuff like that, people are down and they get, you know, mad road rage, New York City road rage. Come on. Have you ever been there? I have. It's horrible. Uh, here's a quick map of the wave heights going on right now. Uh, we are getting effects as far as the the northern tip of Florida, northern east side of Florida. Uh, wave height 6 feet, 6.9, a uh, little bit less for uh, North Carolina, and then Vir Virginia Beach is getting almost 10 feet, it looks like, in this area. And then we can expect the wave action to get bigger in the northeast. It's just that's what's going to happen. So again, the beaches are going to take the most of this as far as the erosion goes. Uh, high water levels, we're watching channels that lead inland that are going to be affected. And then, if again, if we have this four, five, six days of rain, um, that's just saturation, guys. So we got to need to look out for flooding issues. Here is the spaghetti model currently for Jose. They're all in agreement it's going to do this loop. Some of them have it doing an opposite uh, type of loop deal. But regardless, all it's going to affect is all the coast from Chesapeake Bay all the way up in basically New Hampshire at this point. And I wouldn't be surprised parts of Canada, too. <clears throat> Here is one of our satellite images. This gives you a little bit of an idea of that bow we're talking about. Uh, the shear winds are actually coming down from underneath and up underneath Jose. You can see it's bare on this side. Basically the eye is right where my mouse is and then it's going to start to bow out like we see in the top there. You can see it a little better in this shot but here's the eye basically. Check it out. It's almost just a blue water eye so everything's starting to expand. Once this hits the cool waters the reason it's expanding is because the cloud base is uh, expanding out of every side except for the bottom because it's getting pushed. That's why these wind fields are so wide here. We're talking look a quarter of New York is covered all of northeast and southeast Pennsylvania uh, the whole east side of Virginia, east side of North Carolina, which are going to be feeling these winds uh, basically now in the next hour and a half. You're going to start feeling winds here, the coast. So basically the coasts are going to start feeling this moving all the way up, like I said, all the way to New Hampshire. Some of the stronger winds being near Montauk, uh, the southeast side of Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, guys. So here we go. We're just going to see what this thing's going to do. We're going to see how much rain we get. And all while we're doing that, we need to watch Maria. Maria is a super strengthening storm. Um, guys, I'm, I don't like doing predictions and stuff, but I would not be surprised to see this thing be our next Cat 5. Even though we are about a week past the peak of the season, um, it doesn't seem to be mattering to... Uh, nature right now. This storm is blowing up. It's basically covering the entire Lesser Antilles and it's as wide as the top of the Leeward Islands all the way down. So just check this thing out and you can see it widening. It's just getting bigger and bigger and still the projected path. Uh, here's just a little quick update on Lee. Lee's 35 miles per hour, 1007 barometric pressure, so really nothing to worry about with this thing yet unless it comes back down and reforms. Again, here's Jose, uh, 85 mile an hour winds, uh, gusts of 92 to 96, 974 pressure, and we're moving north, straight up north at 9 miles an hour for now until we get to that loop. And then Maria is moving 13 miles an hour, west-northwest, same as Irma was doing, 977 in the pressure, and 90 mile an hour winds, guys, I saw 115 mile an hour gusts reported. So this thing is getting bigger, it's going to be something to worry about, it's going to affect the east coast based on the pressure in the gulf, and they're talking about the jet stream, guys, they keep talking about how they're waiting for the jet stream to push it to the... Uh, to move towards the East Coast and then meet Maria and push it out like Jose. We started talking about that four or five days ago. So it's just good to see uh, information being verified. So you guys can see it on the TV if you're watching and then hear it here. It's just, this is important. This is why we do this stuff. Here are the tropical storm watches, guys, all the way from Fenwick Island, all the way up around, basically into New Hampshire. So if you are in this area, you are going to feel Jose uh, no matter what, and even past these areas. I think this thing should go a lot deeper inland <clears throat> just because of the expanding wind, the wind field, guys. That's what's important here. And here is our timeline for Jose right now. Again, here are your warnings. Beach erosion, lots of uh, wind, 
rain, and then four or five days of this, guys, saturation. That's what we're worried about, a lot of flooding. Here are the projected models for Maria. We'll take a look real quick. Uh, all the models that were on Florida or the Gulf have shifted to the East Coast. So now, again, it's going to be a race against time for Maria to meet that jet stream. That's what we want to see. We want the jet stream low dip to hit Maria here and move it out. Now, really quick, guys, I want to show you the latest models for this. Here's the ECMWF. If you watch, I'm going to hit play. That is Jose expanding. You see it loop around, and then it does that uh, that effect again. That effect is back on the models now. They're saying it's going to happen again. There they go. They meet right there, and they spin around each other. And it actually swings Maria out into the Atlantic, which would be a good thing. We're just going to have to wait and see. You see them? And there it goes. There's Maria. A major hurricane still, even in the cold waters. You see that pressure? That was 955, guys. That's major. That's possibly a Category 3, even in the Northeast. So we are now relying on Jose and the jet stream to basically be uh, play a part in getting rid of Maria. We're just going to have to wait and see. Now, there is discrepancy with these models again, guys. Here's the GFS. Watch what the GFS does. There's Jose moving up past uh, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, and then into Delaware, New Jersey, Long Island gets swung on, and then uh, Massachusetts, it loops back around and then sits there for five days. Just sits in this pocket right here, soaking the coast, making everything soggy, and then guess what? Here's Maria. Now, according to the GFS, the jet stream is going to carry out Maria, but not before doing significant damage to these coasts, guys. I don't know if you saw how close that thing got, and that's Category 3 possibly a four right here guys this could be a category four hurricane right here uh, totally affecting the coast of north carolina virginia chesapeake bay and then who knows if the winds change now check out the navgem version look what these guys have to say very interesting stuff the models are not in agreement right now here is jose winfield expands affects this area for two three almost four days also loops around. That's one thing they're agreement on is this loop right here. They just don't know where it's going to go there. Look at what Maria does, guys. Right into South Carolina landfall. On. Let's move forward here. So there's a 23rd, 24th, 25th landfall in uh, South Carolina, guys. That's what Navgem's showing now. So that's what I'm showing you. All right. Um, I am in a little bit of a rush again this morning, guys. I got work this morning. I'll be home this afternoon for an update. Here are our wind fields. Jose spinning, going nuts. Maria is strengthening rapidly, guys. Don't be surprised. Even next 24 hours, Category 3. These poor islands here, they're just going to get smacked again with this hurricane. There's really no getting out of the path of it at this point. So they just need to prepare. I'm going to do some detailed warnings later on when I get home. But, guys, that's it for now. Um... One more time, I want to take a look at the nav gem. They're expanding 975. It actually drops in pressure, according to this model, guys. Strengthening is not out of the question in cool water. They were saying this on the Weather Channel. I did some research on it. It has happened in the past, but the other conditions around it have to be perfect. And one of those conditions is sitting still, believe it or not. If this thing sits still in this water, it's going to be half warm, half cool water. It's going to churn it up so that's a mild water. It's possible to get stronger. So this is not done yet. Jose is not done. And even if that doesn't happen, we're talking lots of wind, lots of rain for days and days. And then we have Maria. And according to Navgem, Maria will make landfall as a Category 3 or possibly a 4 uh, that's even the east side of Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina, covering three states. That's how big this storm is expected to be, guys. we got to keep an eye on it. Uh, we will talk soon. I'm sorry I'm in a rush this morning, but I hope we got enough information out there for people to be aware of what's going on. Tropical storm warnings all over the east coast. This is what we're dealing with. I will be back shortly with an update, guys. Thank you very much.